In this tutorial, we will provide an overview of our plugin for 3 Decisicons Max and the Corona Render Engine. As you can see, our test scene contains four cameras with an animation range from 0 to 120. First, let's prepare our scene for farm rendering. To proceed, simply open the render settings and review your setup. Ensure that the render range is correctly set in the Common tab. In the Scene tab, you can choose from all the available render limit settings. Our plugin supports all three setups, pass limit, time limit, and noise level limit. Next, let's proceed with the rest of the render setup. In the Performance tab, you have the option to choose from all available GI solutions. We support all possible combinations, whether it's a single GI engine like Path Tracing or both Path Tracing and UHD Cache or 4K Cache. Moreover, our Max plugin also supports pre-cached GI maps. So if you prefer to use your own GI cache, simply connect it to the scene in any loading mode. At the end of the render setup, you can add various render elements to enhance your output. You have the flexibility to add as many render elements as you desire, including light mix outputs. This allows you to have full control over the lighting in your scene during post-processing. Once the render setup is well prepared and ready to render, simply close the settings and save your scene. Next, proceed to the Render Beamer menu. In the Render Beamer menu, you will find several functions connected to the farm workflow. The first one will send your project to Render Beamer for rendering. The next function, Web Manager, will open the Web Manager dashboard. Here, you can add scenes, monitor the progress of your renders, and add credits to your account. This dashboard provides convenient control and management of your rendering process. The third function will open our YouTube channel, which is filled with video tutorials dedicated to each supported 3D application. These tutorials provide valuable guidance and insights on using our plugin effectively. The last function is the cost calculator. When activated, this function will send your scene's render range and CPU model to our online render cost calculator tool. This tool will assist you in estimating the rendering cost for your project, helping you plan and budget accordingly. To proceed with the process, simply select the first option, Beam It Up. Our plugin will check your scene for possible errors. If any errors are detected, you will be notified through prompts. Once the checking procedure is complete, you will be presented with the main plugin user interface. First, let's take a look at the Mode panel. Depending on the GI settings and animation scenario in your scene, you can choose between three modes. The first mode on the list is Render As Is. This mode serves as the basic option and can be used for various types of scenes. Full animated scenes, camera animations where GI caching is not required, fast single frame still shots with small resolutions, and of course testing purposes. In this mode, the farm will render your scene as it is, without making any changes to the GI settings or render options. The second mode on the selection list is Camera Animation, Bake, and Render. This mode is specifically designed for scenes where the camera is the only animated object and there are no other moving elements. In the Camera Animation, Bake, and Render mode, the GI of your scene will be cached on the farm side. A pre-cached GI map will be generated and used for rendering. In the Camera Animation Bake and Render mode, you have the option to set the GI caching density using the Baking Step value. By default, the Baking Step value is set to 10, which means that the GI will be saved every 10th frame. This default value of every 10th frame is a universal setting that works well for most scenarios. However, if your camera is moving very fast within the scene, you can increase the Baking density to a lower value such as 5 or a similar value. This will ensure that the GI caching captures the rapid camera movements accurately. Lastly, the Still Image, Render or Bake and Render mode is specifically designed for rendering high-resolution single frames. It utilizes our custom distributed rendering technique, where each render node is assigned a specific strip of the image to render. This approach helps distribute the rendering workload efficiently across multiple nodes in Still Image Mode, you have the option to cache GI on the farm side, which is highly recommended. Next to the cache switch, 
you will find the Number of Strips box. This setting allows you to specify the desired number of render regions used for rendering. Now, let's proceed with the test scene. We will use the camera animation mode. The next part of the plugin UI consists of render limits. This setup is a direct reflection of the Corona render settings in 3ds Max. However, the difference is that these settings are specifically used for our farm plugin prepared scenes. This means that if you wish to render your scene on the farm with different quality settings than the original, you can make those changes here. Next, let's take a look at the camera and render range settings. In this section, you will see a list of all renderable cameras. Next to each camera, there is a frame range box where you can specify a different render range for each camera. In our test scene, each view is animated with the same range, from 0 to 120 frames. These camera and render range settings offer flexibility in defining specific frame ranges for individual cameras or applying a consistent range across all cameras in your scene. Below the camera list, you will find additional render settings. The Overwrite Extension option allows you to force all render outputs to be saved in a format different from what is set in the scene settings. You can also specify a separate output directory for saving render elements. This is useful for compositing purposes, as it allows you to easily access and work with individual frame range for each render element. The next switch, Save Render Elements Separately XR slash CXR slash FXR, can only be used with multi-layer output formats. Enabling this option will prompt Corona to extract render elements from the main output. The new project name field can be used when rendering multiple scenes that share the same asset lists. To proceed, simply click the Send to Farm button. This will initiate the scene and asset preparation process within the 3D's Max plugin. The preparation consists of two stages, collection and relinking. After the preparation process, your scene will be reloaded in the background to its original state, and all the plugin data will be passed to RenderBeamer. Next, RenderBeamer will upload your files to the farm's file servers. You can continue the process by clicking the Click Here to Submit Job button or copying the provided link into your web browser. After the job submission window appears, you can perform a final check of the render setup before proceeding with the rendering process. As you can observe, many of the plugin settings, such as resolution, output format, and camera list, are accurately reflected here. If your project includes scene states, you have the option to switch the mode from cameras to scene states. However, if you don't have scene states defined, it's recommended to leave it as it is. For this particular scene, we will set pass limit to 50. To proceed, use the Submit button. This action will add all selected cameras to the farm render queue. Upon inspection, you will notice that each render camera contains two render jobs. Bake, which corresponds to the GI caching job, and Render. The two jobs, GI caching and rendering, work together in tandem. The render job will not start until the GI caching job is 100% complete. Typically, the GI caching process takes a relatively short amount of time. Once the GI caching is finished, the rendering process will start. You can monitor the rendering progress by utilizing the Show Progress option directly on each camera. By clicking on it, you can select any frame that is already rendering. Please note that before rendering begins, several pre-processing tasks need to be completed, such as loading the scene, processing textures and shaders, and so on. As a result, the render preview may not be immediately available at the start of the rendering process. In the progress view, you will find a frame buffer preview directly from the render node. The render progress is automatically refreshed at regular intervals, eliminating the need to manually refresh the render preview window. Once some frames have been rendered, you can begin downloading them to your local drive. Switch back to Render Beamer and navigate to the Downloads tab. Refresh the list to ensure the latest rendered outputs are displayed, and then press the Download All button. Render Beamer will start retrieving the rendered outputs from the farm file servers. Let's examine the downloaded outputs. Please select the Open Directory option for the downloaded folder. Here you will find all the downloaded frames for the kitchen camera. 
and this is the main output frame from rendered animation. In addition to the main output, you will also see separate folders for each of the render elements. These folders contain the individual render elements frame sequence. Now, just wait for complete rendering and simply download the remaining files and begin working on the composition. This is how the final raw animation looks after rendering with 3D's Max and Corona on our farm. Thank you for choosing garagefarm.net for your rendering needs. We wish you a successful and satisfying rendering experience. Happy rendering with Garage Farm. Thank you.